The rise of SpaceX to the very top of the rocket industry is nothing short of impressive. The company has carved a name for itself as the operator of some of the most reliable spacecrafts active today, thanks to innovations like the Raptor engine. But what secrets does this miraculous engine hold? What makes the Raptor so much more advanced than its peers? Let's find out. Elon Musk and his SpaceX team are working on a huge rocket called the Starship Super Heavy. It will be the biggest and most powerful spacecraft ever made. What makes it so strong is a very special special engine called the Raptor. In fact, they're using 33 of these engines, which is more than anyone has ever used before. But it's not just about having a lot of engines. To make the Starship work, SpaceX needs an engine that is both reliable and cost-efficient. This is where the Raptor comes in. It goes beyond what we thought was possible with chemical combustion and has been designed in a way that no one has dared to try before. The basic idea is quite simple. Inside the rocket, there are two tanks for fuel. One tank holds oxygen, which is needed for fire to burn, just like blowing air onto a campfire to make it stronger. The other tank holds fuel, which differs depending on the type of rocket. Many rockets use a chemical called RP-1, which is purified kerosene. RP-1 is inexpensive, easy to obtain, and remains in liquid form at normal temperatures. To turn oxygen into rocket fuel, it needs to be converted from a gas to a liquid state. This is done by cooling it to a very low temperature, called cryogenic temperature. Oxygen becomes a liquid when it it reaches a temperature below minus 183 degrees Celsius or minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. RP-1 is indeed a good fuel for rockets, but it has a downside. When it burns, kerosene produces a lot of soot and solid carbon residue. This residue, known as coking, sticks to the inside of the rocket engine. For most rockets that are disposable, this isn't a big issue since they're only used once. However, for a reusable rocket, this is a major problem. Now, SpaceX is planning to reuse the Starship and its booster multiple times per day, which means they can't afford the time and effort to deal with coking. To solve this problem, the Starship uses methane as its fuel instead. Methane is commonly known as natural gas and is known for burning cleanly. We use methane in our furnaces and stovetops without worrying about cleaning them daily. The same principle applies to a rocket engine that burns methane. It can be used multiple times without requiring maintenance in between flights. Converting methane into a liquid state for rocket fuel, just like oxygen, adds complexity to the system. It involves supercooling methane to cryogenic temperatures, similar to what is done with oxygen. Dealing with two cryogenic liquids adds a significant level of difficulty, which is why many other companies have not pursued this approach. However, SpaceX has taken on this challenge with the Raptor engine, which is the first rocket engine designed to burn methane. It has successfully launched and is expected to be the first methane-burning engine to reach orbit. When a rocket engine starts, two pumps will push both the oxygen and fuel with a lot of force into the combustion chamber. They will be set on fire, and this will create a lot of energy as they burn and expand, creating pressure. All of this energy will leave the combustion chamber through the throat. It's similar to blowing out a candle by pushing the air from your lungs out through a small opening in your lips. By making the gas exit through a small opening, you create high pressure in your mouth. Then, all of the hot, high-pressure exhaust from the combustion enters the nozzle. It expands from the size of the throat to the size of the nozzle opening. The expansion in the nozzle actually makes the exhaust go even faster than when it left the throat. The more the nozzle expands from the throat to the end, the more the exhaust accelerates. This process turns pressure into thrust. The faster we can push out the exhaust gas from the back of the nozzle, the faster the rocket will move forward. Remember, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The important thing to understand here is that pressure always moves from high to low. There is high pressure at the throat and low pressure at the tip of the nozzle. That's why the exhaust flows in that direction. This is also why the whole rocket doesn't just explode like a bomb. As long as the pressure in the pumps is higher than the pressure in the combustion chamber, the combusted gas cannot flow backward. The Raptor engine is remarkable because it pushes the limits of what is physically possible in this process. It achieves this by combining extremely high pressure with highly efficient combustion. The design of the Raptor engine is known as a full-flow staged combustion cycle. To understand what's happening inside a Raptor engine, we need to add one more component to the path that the propellants take from the tank to the combustion chamber. In the Raptor cycle, the liquids are pumped out of the tanks and then sent directly into a pair of gas turbines. Both the fuel and the oxygen are directed towards separate turbines in the Raptor engine. While many rocket engines use a single turbine, either for oxygen or fuel, the Raptor engine stands out by having dual gas turbines. When the cryogenic liquid reaches these turbines, it first 
encounters a preburner. This preburner acts like a small rocket engine itself, combusting the liquid enough to convert it into a gas. However, since neither of these liquids can burn independently, there needs to be a connection between the two preburners. This allows a small amount of oxygen to mix with the methane flow and a small amount of methane to mix with the oxygen flow. The combustion process transforms the liquid into gas, which is then propelled into the turbine housing. The spinning blades of the turbine drive the pump, which forcefully ejects the now gaseous propellants into the combustion chamber at extremely high pressure. To facilitate this process, SpaceX employs equipment on the launch mount to externally spin, start the turbines. As a result, both the oxygen and methane exit the turbines as gases that are very hot and have high pressure. When these gases come into contact with each other in the combustion chamber, a gas-on-gas -gas reaction occurs, leading to the most efficient combustion possible. This gas-on-gas -gas reaction generates significantly more energy compared to a liquid-on-liquid -liquid reaction. According to Elon Musk, this gas-on-gas -gas reaction achieved by the Raptor combustion chamber is 99% efficient, which is the maximum efficiency allowed by the laws of physics. Musk goes as far as to say that only God himself could potentially do a better job at combining molecules than the Raptor engine. This is one of the main reasons why SpaceX had to develop the new Raptor V2 engine. Additionally, Musk has revealed that version 2 eliminates the need for an igniter in the combustion chamber. The gases will self-combust without the need for an external igniter ignition source. Although Musk did not explain the details of how this happens, he mentioned that removing the igniter system significantly reduces complexity, leading to a lower cost and lighter overall engine design. Elon Musk describes igniting the Raptor engine as a delicate interplay between the fuel system and the oxygen system. Every component is interconnected, and any issue in one part can have a cascading effect on the entire engine. In the worst case scenario, the engine could explode, or at least certain parts could melt. Musk acknowledges that SpaceX has experienced failures during its testing phase, including the destruction of approximately 20 to 30 Raptor engines and the melting of around 50 combustion chambers. However, the company has intentionally developed its infrastructure to support an extremely high production rate for the Raptor engine, aiming for approximately one engine per day. This rapid production rate allows for quick iterations and design changes, as evident by the newly announced Raptor version 3. The improved Raptor 3 engine has been able to reach a pressure of 350 bars and generate a thrust of 269 tons. In comparison, the currently employed Raptor 2S were consistently achieving a thrust of 230 tons by February 2022. However, SpaceX anticipates that through refining engine parameters and design, they will eventually reach a minimum of 250 tons of thrust. Additionally, Elon Musk mentioned that the production cost of the Raptor 3 engines was approximately half of the previous Raptor 1 version used by SpaceX from 2018 to 2021. To put it into perspective, the Saturn V rocket, considered the most powerful launch vehicle in history, generated a total thrust of 34.5 million newtons during its operational history. If successful, the Starship Super Heavy Booster equipped with Raptor 3 engines would have 2.56 times the thrust of the Saturn V rocket. While most companies are very secretive about their proprietary technologies, SpaceX has taken a more transparent approach to give us a glimpse of what the future holds. Now that we know all the secrets of the Raptor, what do you think? Can the Raptor really take the Starship to Mars? Or does SpaceX need to go back to the drawing board? Be sure to let us know in the comments below.